I'm depressed. I just weighed myself. And guys, ish, things don't look too good, eh? My tummy is getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And in this section, we are going to do a whole lot of different calculations to do with mass and weight. So let's not waste any time. Let's get going with our very, very first example. But before we look at that first example, let's look at what I've got on the screen. I've got uh, milligrams, I've got grams, I've got kilograms, and I've got tons. Now, guys, when we deal with weight or mass, I have to, have to know the following. I have to know that there are a thousand milligrams in a gram. I have to know that there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. And I have to know that there are a thousand kilograms in a ton. And remember, if I'm converting from tons to kilograms or tons to grams or tons to milligrams, I'm going to multiply. And if I'm converting the other way around, milligrams to grams or to kilograms or to tons, I'm going to divide. Now, folk, bearing all that in mind, let's look at these examples. A lift in a shopping mall has a notice that indicates it can only carry 2.2 tons or a maximum of 20 people. Convert the tons measurement to kilograms and work out the engineer or work out what the engineer who built the lift estimated the average weight of a person to be. Now, I saw this very same notice in a lift the other day where it said it can carry 2,2 tons in the lift or 20 people. And straight away, my mind did two things. Number one, I looked around at all the people in the lift and made sure there weren't more than 20. Okay, and there weren't. It was kind of cool. There were about 18 people. But then the next thing that I realized was this. Ish, these are not small people. Okay, I was probably one of the smallest ones there. There were some big O's in that. They were off to a fat anonymous meeting, okay. And they had just like, these were big O's. And there were a whole lot of them in this lift. And I was thinking, hold on. Even though this lift says it can take 20 people, it also says it can take a maximum of 2,2 tons. So, what happens if the 220 people are heavier than 2,2 tons? We're going to have a problem here, Houston. Okay, we're going to have a big problem. So, the engineer obviously had a figure in his mind. He said, on average, people weigh a certain amount of kilograms. And when I take that amount and I divide it by 20, okay, I will be able to, when I multiply it by 20, I'll get 2,2 tons. So let's have a look here. So there are two things we're going to do in this question. The first one, we're going to convert the ton measurement to kilograms. And the second thing we're going to do is we're going to work out what the engineer who built the lift estimated the average weight of each person to be. So let's do that. I'm going to say, right, I've got 2,2 tons. Now remember, to convert tons into kilograms, there's a jump of a thousand. Okay, so we know we've got a thousand. When I go this way, tons to kilograms, I'm going to multiply. So we're going to multiply it out. So 2.2 times a thousand gives me 2,200 kilograms. Okay, quite a hell lot of weight. Now, the second part is this. What is the engineer estimating everyone to weigh. So 2,200 kilograms. We're going to divide that by 20. Let's take out our calculator because we're dealing in big numbers here. 2,200. Divide that by 20 people and that gives me 110. So he is saying on average, if every person weighs 110 kilograms, and 20 of those people get into the lift, the lift will work. We won't have a problem. But if 
The average is more than 110 kilograms per person. And 20 people get into this lift. Oh my giddy aunt, we're going down. Okay, right. Let's have a look at another wonderful example. A long distance bus seats 50 passengers and allows each passenger to each have a luggage of up to 30 kilograms. If 50 people with average weight of 80 kilograms per person each have one piece of luggage that weighs an average of 29 kilograms, what would be the total load carried by the bus in tons? Okay, so why is this important? I'm sure as you've driven along a highway, you've suddenly seen like a truck stop or a bus stop and it's actually like a weighing thing. So they weigh how heavy is this truck or how heavy is this bus? And if you've caught one of those buses before, you will know that the bus has got to pull over into this weighing station and they weigh the bus. And the reason why they have to do that is they've got to make sure that that bus weighs no more than what it's supposed to carry. And the reason for that is this, that if that bus has to start braking and the weight is heavier than what it should be, those brakes are not going to be effective. And as a result, it could lead to a tragedy. So these weighing stations are actually there for your own good. So what happens is this, the bus driver comes along and he says, right, in my bus, I've got 50 people and each person weighs on average 80 kilograms. So how much weight do I actually have on my bus? So I've got 50 times 80, which means I've got 4,000 kilograms. So already my bus has got 4,000 kilograms worth of weight on it, besides the weight of the bus itself. But not only do we have passengers, they've also got some bags and they've averaged each bag to be round about 29 kilograms. So I've got 29 kilograms and each person has one of those bags and they're 50 people, so they're 50 bags. So again, we're going to say, right, we've got 50 people, each one with a bag of 29 kilograms gives me 1,450 kilograms. So when I add that up, I'm going to get 5,450 kilograms. That is what weight on the bus. Now, have I answered the question? What was the question? The question would be, what would be the total weight? And yes, I have answered that. But the question does go on to say the following. In tons. And I haven't got my answer in tons. I've actually got my answer in kilograms. So we do need to change that to tons. So I know I've got 5,450 kilograms. There are 1,000 kilograms in a ton. I'm going to divide it by 1,000 and I get 5,45 tons. And that's the weight my bus is busy carrying at the moment. Now, if the bus weighs 4 tons, how much does it weigh in total in kilograms, including all the passengers and the luggage? So I've got four tons. I'm going to multiply it by a thousand and I land up that my bus weighs 4,000 kilograms. To that, I've got to add the weight of the people and their luggage, which is 5,450. So 5,450 kilograms gets added to this which means I'm going to land up then with 9,450 kilograms. And if you look on the side of a bus, it'll say, hey, this bus should not weigh more than this, or this bus should not weigh more uh, uh, than that. Okay, it'll give the figure. And so when that bus goes on the weighing um, scale, the traffic cop will say, mm, cool, you're within your weight limit, you can carry on. Let's have a look at this example. Sweet jam can be bought in bulk from a warehouse in boxes that contain 25 tins of 250 grams. Calculate the total weight of the jam in each box. And they want the answer in kilograms. So I've got a tin of jam, it's 250 grams, and I've got 25 of these tins. So I'm going to say, okay, but I've got 250 grams, I've got 25 of them, gives me a total of 6,250 grams. 
question though, they want my answer in kilograms. So I'm going to divide that by a thousand and I get 6,25 kilograms. Okay, straightforward. Next question says this. If a trader orders fix 15 boxes of sweet jam, calculate the total weight of his order in kilograms. Now we worked out that one box is 6,25 kilograms. So I'm going to say I've got a box of 6,25 kilograms. Okay, and we want 15 of these boxes. So we're going to just take the 6,25, multiply it by 15 boxes, and I get an answer here of 93,75 kilograms. Okay, so sure, that's quite a lot of weight to carry, hey? Okay, we're having fun here because uh, we're looking at all kinds of examples. And guys, when I learn for a test, the more examples I do, the easier it's going to be in the exam. Because, you know, the truth is this, that the exam at the end of the year, they can only ask you questions that's in the syllabus. And so if I look at my syllabus or if I look at the CAPS document and I say, right, I've got to know how do you do a whole lot of weight problems, okay, or problems dealing with maths. And I do as many as I can. Chances are that when the exam comes, I'm not going to be surprised by a question. I'm going to say, hey, I did a question similar to this one. It's easy. So that's why we're just doing so many examples and getting into it. Okay, you should never carry more than 15% of your body weight. Elias weighs 66 kilograms and his backpack with school books weighs 12 kilograms. Elizabeth weighs 72 kilograms and her school bag with school books weighs 8 kilograms. Okay, determine 50% of Elias weight. Then, is his bag too heavy for him? So, Elias weighs 66 kilograms, and we want to say, well, what is 15% of that 66 kilograms? So, 66, multiply that now by 15%, or 15 over 100, and we get an answer then of 9,9 .9 kilograms. So, he should not be carrying more than 9,9 .9 kilograms. And his backpack weighs 12 kilograms. Is his bag too heavy for him? Absolutely. Elias, throw some of those books away. Just not your maths lit books, eh? Keep those. But throw the English and the geography and the history away. You don't need those. Those are not important subjects. Okay, next one. Thou says this. Determine 15% of Elizabeth's weight. And is her bag too heavy for her? Now, she weighs 72 kilograms. All right. Heavy girl, this one. All right. 72 kilograms. And we're going to multiply that by 15%. Well, we're not going to do it. Our calculator is doing it. So we're going to say 72 multiplied by 15% or 15 over 100 equals. And we get an answer of 10,8 kilograms. She should not be carrying more than that. And what is she carrying? She is carrying a bag, 8 kilograms. So, yeah, 10,8. You know what? She's carrying fine. In fact, she should be a nice woman. Go to Elias and say to him, listen, buddy, you're carrying too much. Give me some of your stuff. I'll put it in my bag. I can still carry more. What a cool thing that would be, hey? Imagine your girlfriend coming to you one day and saying, hey, listen, you look like you're struggling, bud. Give me some of your books. I'll carry them for you. Eh? I, I don't think that'll happen. No, no, not at all. All right, next question. A 30 kilogram bag of fertilizer cost 42 rand 60. The school needs to buy 96 bags. How much will they pay for the fertilizer? Well, 96 bags, each bag cost 42 rand 60. It's straightforward, isn't it? We're going to say 42 rand 60, multiply that by 96 bags, and we're going to push a few buttons, say 42.60, multiply that by 96, and we get an answer of 4,089 rand. 4,089 rand 60. Okay, that's what my fertilizer is going to cost. The question now goes on, says, how many kilograms of fertilizer will they buy in total? Well, they've got 96 bags, and each bag is 30 kilograms. So I'm going to say 96 bags times 30 kilograms, and then we're going to get an answer. So we say 96 
multiply that by 30 and we get an answer of 2880 kilograms okay quite a bit to carry around with you mr boysons needs to buy sand to build a new room onto his house sand is sold for 23 rand per kilogram mr boysons needs to buy 0.8 tons of sand in order to build the room write the amount of sand needed in kilograms again guys we know we got kilograms we got tons and the difference is thousand if i go this way i multiply if i go that way i divide i've got 0 0.8 i need to involve a thousand here i'm going from tons to kilograms i'm going that way i'm going to multiply i multiply that and I land up with 800 kilograms of sand that I actually need to purchase. Calculate the total amount of money he will have to spend to buy enough sand for the project. So we told that um, it's 23 rand per kilogram. So I'm going to say, right, I need 800 kilograms. Each kilogram is 23 rand. What's that going to cost me? So I'm going to say I've got 800 rand, multiplying that by 23, and I get an answer of 18,400 rand. That's a lot of money to spend on sand, eh? Jeez. And you can just go to the beach and get it there. Right, next question. If sand is only sold in 50 kilogram bags, how many bags will Mr. Boyson need to buy? So he needed 800 kilograms okay, of sand. We're going to divide it by 50 to see how many bags we actually need. So we've got 800 kilograms. We're dividing it by 50 kilogram bags. We need 16 bags in total. Okay, I'm enjoying this, eh? And I'm enjoying it because I understood right from the beginning that grams to kilograms, they're a thousand. Kilograms to tons, they're a thousand. If I go this direction, I'm going to times. And if I go that direction, I'm going to divide. A chef is preparing a meal that needs 3,75 kilograms of rice and 1,5 kilograms of beef. The recipe will feed eight people. Rice is sold in two kilogram bags or in packets of two kilograms. How many packets will he need for each meal? Well, we know we need 3,75 kilograms. We're going to divide it by two and we're going to land up with a weird and wonderful answer. We've got 3.75. We're going to divide that now by two and we get an answer of 1,875. So 1,875 bags of rice I need. Now, folk, I can't buy 1,875 bags, so I'm going to have to buy two bags of rice. If rice costs 31 rand 50 per 2 kilogram pack, calculate the total cost of the rice he will need. Well, we've just worked it out and we've said, hey, hold on, he's going to need to buy two bags. So how much is the rice going to cost him? It's going to cost him 31 rand 50. Folk, we've done a bit of examples. We've done quite a few examples, really. Let's just summarize this uh, short session. So in this segment, we've covered the following. We've learned to integrate finance with the units of mass. We trust you've learned something, and uh, I'll chat to you after the break. Cheers.